after having the diagnosis, after sur post-surgery diagnosis, that this was indeed metastatic stage four cancer, um, you realize that this is terminal and that um, this is basically what is going to kill you. Um, and the general prognosis or the curve on this was, wasn't very long. So you start to wonder what's going to happen and, and your, your emotional state and your mental state totally turns upside down. You, you no longer have this life ahead of you that you've planned for. Um, all of a sudden you have a, a very finite and possibly very short time left. So you're very anxious about the fact that even though right now, you know, you've just had the surgery, you're under chemotherapy and you, you're kind of feeling okay, you, you know that something's going to happen soon. You, you don't know how bad it, you're going to feel. You don't know what part of the body this is going to come back in. You don't know how physically you're going to feel and you don't know how limited your capabilities are going to become. You don't know how much pain you're going to have. Um, and so it becomes a very negative emotional set where you're basically living in fear. Um, unfortunately, that fear can be to an extent that it paralyzes the, the good life that you're living at the moment while you're still healthy, where you're not sure, well, when is it going to come back? Where is it going to come back? What's going to happen to me? How is my family going to be able to deal with it? How, what are they going to have to do to help me and support me? Because, I mean, my husband is a, is a dear. We've been together for, married for 28 years and known each other for 36. And he's so supportive and loving that I knew this was an enormous amount of pain for him. There was the guilt of being the source of that pain as well as all of my own fear. And um, it becomes almost o overwhelming where you, you, like I said, it infringes upon the time that you're enjoying. So crippled by this fear and, and this guilt about infringing on other people's emotions and lives and having your life kind of ripped apart, it, all of a sudden long-term plans meant nothing. You couldn't make any plans further than a week's. Who knows, who knew what was going to happen? Um, and so I, I was hoping that this study would help um, and also with the support of a psychiatric team would allow me to deal with some of that, to clear it up a little, to, to find a way to achieve a level of, of peace within myself and, and thinking about it. And, and you, you start to just, your emotions overwhelm you. And, and so as, as this session began and, and as it built up, I, I felt this, this lump of of emotions kind of welling up and firming up almost like a, an entity. And um, I started to cry a little and just to f start to feel all, it was almost like everything was concentrated a little and came up, welling up, and then it started to dissipate and I started to look at it differently. And I think that's the beauty of having, being able to expand your consciousness change the way you're feeling about things, open. I don't think the drug is, is the cause of these things. I think it's a catalyst that allows you to release your own thoughts and feelings from someplace that you've, you've bound them very tightly. And so it allows you to, to open your own mind and your consciousness and release other feelings, explore other ways you might feel about these things. And I began to realize that all of this negative fear and the guilt was was such a, a hindrance to the actual positive part of making the most of and enjoying the healthy time that I'm having that I and however long it may be that I was basically not utilizing it to the best and enjoying my life because I was so afraid of what wasn't there yet and so I had the opportunity in this altered state of mind to think about how if I could just let go of that and not focus so much on being afraid of what wasn't here today, that I could live more in for today, in the here and now, in the present, and enjoy the, the 
the time that I had and, and take it as a gift, that it was something um, that was so precious and uh, that um, it didn't deserve to be clouded by, by these fears, that there would be plenty of time to be uh, worried about it and to be afraid when something really happened, when, when the disease manifested itself again and needed to be dealt with at a different level. But today, I wasn't at that level. And I was able to really internalize that thought and, and those feelings. And um, there was a tremendous feeling of relief and of, of very, uh, of happiness and of, of hope that this could move on and go forward and um, that it was something that I could deal with. Certainly, it affects the quality of life. I mean, your emotions are a huge part of the quality of your life. But I also really truly believe that by dealing with your emotional fears and your mental fears, that you're, fe you're freer to take better care of yourself physically to fight the disease. For instance, one of the things about feeling very hopeful and optimistic is I get myself out there and, and exercise really hard because it makes me physically feel better and I know it physically makes me stronger. Um, I, I can't discount the fact that that a, a state of mind and, and the, the amount of rest you get and, and the, your emotional condition just fortifies your own defenses and that it boosts your own physical ability to fight the disease. There seems to be quite a bit of evidence that points to that and I certainly can't argue with it. Um, I think it's been an, an enormously, enormously beneficial exercise and um, I would like to see this become a part of the mainstream treatment of stage four cancer, of no matter what part of the body it appears in or, or, or uh, whatever. I think it's uh, something that should be available. And for many reasons, some people may or may not choose to, make, to take advantage of it. But I, I can't see any reason why it shouldn't be available as but, part of your treatment plan. Is there any part of it that you think might scare people? I think that the most scary thing for, for people who would hesitate would be um, all the fear mongering, you know, mostly by government and, and religious groups and people who, who think this is just all evil and horrible. And, and it's not. It's, these substances are, occur in our natural world. People have been using them for, for thousands of years to, to treat physical illness, to treat um, social and behavioral problems, and to treat, to open their consciousness and, and to experience an ecstatic state of consciousness. And um, this isn't, it isn't the boogeyman, but I think it's very important. Uh, I'd like to see out of studies like this to come honest, open information about all kinds of substances and that people understand that there are enormous benefits, there are certainly some risks. They should all be out in the open for people to evaluate and to choose whether this is something that they would feel comfortable doing.